In the Castlevania series, Simon and Richter Belmont swing their whips and toss blessed weapons to defeat hordes of evil creatures. But did they ever once consider how that makes those evil creatures feel? Well, even if you're not an evil creature, you've probably been on the receiving end of a Belmont's treasure trove of keep away tools. We don't want to assume anything, but we're guessing that it wasn't fun. Yes, the Belmonts have a reputation for being some of the most annoying characters to face in Smash Ultimate, so much that they've led countless players to depart from a game before its conclusion. What is it that makes fighting Simon and Richter so frustrating? In this video, we're going to break down every aspect of Belmont's moveset and metagame that steps on players' nerves so often. If you'd like to learn more about Simon Richter or any other character, you can find plenty of useful resources on our website, ProGuides.com. You'll find our tier list, character guides, plus we've got exclusive courses by MKLeo, Zero, and more. You can take advantage of our Play With Pros platform to get yourself a pro coach right now. So let's take a look at the Belmonts. To clear up any confusion, Simon and Richter are Echo Fighters, and in their case, this makes them completely identical in all ways. The only extremely subtle difference is that Simon's Holy Water has a fire element property, whereas Richter's does not, but this hardly ever matters. The Belmonts use their iconic whip for most of their normal attacks. This whip reaches very far, making it one of the longest disjoints in the game. The whip attacks have a tipper sweet spot around the spiky ball at the end of the whip, so Belmont players will be rewarded for max range spacing. These whip attacks alone are enough to do a good job for keeping opponents away, but their special moves take it a step further. The Belmont special moves borrow some of the most notable projectiles of the Castlevania series, with proper use of the cross, axe, and holy water. Belmonts can control horizontal and vertical space, as well as start combos. The combination of long-range disjoints and multiple projectiles makes Belmonts fit easily into the zoner archetype. As for many zoners, this leads to campy, keep-away style gameplay that rewards the player for avoiding close-quarters interactions, and this is a big aspect of why they suck the fun out of aggressive players. So now, let's go a bit deeper into how each move shuts down an opponent's options and forces them to play a slower, more methodical game. Cross is very often the first move that a Belmont player will throw out when a match starts. Similar to Link's Boomerang, the cross will return to the player after hitting an opponent or traveling a certain distance. Unlike Link's Boomerang, however, the cross will continue on a straight path regardless of the Belmont's position. Especially considering its rather large hitbox, this makes cross an excellent tool to shut down approaches and force a response from the opponent. If you try running in, you'll get hit by the cross, so you'll have to shield, roll, jump, or send it away with an attack. Most of these actions will give the Belmont time to set up another projectile, such as an axe or holy water, so getting past the first step hardly gets you through the obstacle course. If you opt to jump over the cross as most players do, you'll find yourself in the air where the approach is more telegraphed and the Belmont can punish your landing. If the cross hits you, it will send you away in the direction it's traveling from. This can sometimes result in a combo, but usually it'll just push you away so you have to start the obstacle course over again. Belmonts can get follow-ups from the cross if it hits on the way back, as it will then launch the opponent towards them. This makes jumping or dodging the cross even less effective, as you'll still have to deal with it as it returns. Cross can also be used to cover approaches, as the Belmont can throw it backwards before running in to have a surprise projectile following closely behind. Now let's say you've gotten past a cross and you're excited to finally get your hands on that campy Belmont. Well, <laughs> it's not your turn yet. In the mid-range, Belmonts will likely use their whip to ward you off so they can acquire space and throw more projectiles. If you attempt to rush in on the Belmonts at this point, you'll probably eat a retreating aerial or forward tilt. The Belmonts back air and forward air have extremely long range and can be angled downward to hit grounded opponents. Since they have poor air speed, however, the Belmonts may instead opt for a safer option of retreating forward tilt. Forward tilt is one of Belmont's safest neutral options in general. It's safe on shield and has enough range to get opponents off them in mid-range as they attempt to close in. In doing so, they can retreat against aggressive players and push defensive players way back, which gives them more space to throw more projectiles. Okay, so you're a patient player. You've taken your time weaving the cross, you've waited out the retreating whip, and now you're finally ready to get a hit in. But what happens? The Belmont blocks your attack and punishes you with an up B out of shield. At frame six, the Belmont's uppercut up B is the best out of shield option and has enough range to punish most moves even when well spaced. Uppercut will launch the opponent away, letting the Belmont reset the obstacle course once again. 
It isn't just hard to get in on a Belmont in neutral. They have some excellent tools in advantage state to keep you in the air or on the ledge. If you find yourself in the air or on platforms, there's a good chance you encounter an onslaught of axes. Axe is considerably strong, and it does a wealth of shield damage as well, so avoiding this move altogether is often your priority. The axe flies in an arc that allows it to cover many positions in one toss, and its angle can be altered slightly by the Belmont player. If you're higher up, you'll need to avoid staying straight above the Belmont, as their up air has massive vertical range. This makes this move excellent for catching double jumps, so drifting around it is usually the best option, but this puts you in range for a forward or back air. The scary thing about drifting away is that you'll most likely be entering the tip of range or whatever aerial is lined up to hit you, so sometimes you may actually want to stay a bit closer. When you get hit off stage against a Belmont is when things get legitimately scary. Simon and Richter aren't that great at edge guarding, but you'll still have to circumvent a maze of axes on the way to the ledge. The ledge is where Belmonts are the strongest. However, first, they'll set up the holy water right at the ledge. This covers neutral get up, jump, and get up attack while it's still active and traps the opponent in the frames for a potential follow-up. Next, the Belmont will either throw an axe or charge forward smash. The axe can be used to cover ledge jumps, combo out of holy water, or catch opponents who hold the ledge for too long and it runs out of intangibility. Although Axe has a lot of knockback, it has a long range of hit lag before the character is actually launched, and this can be used to combo into Tippered Forward Smash. Used in tandem with Holy Water, Forward Smash can actually cover all remaining ledge options. If your opponent gets up or jumps into the Holy Water, it will combo into the Forward Smash. If they roll to avoid the Holy Water, the sour spot of the Forward Smash will still connect. And if they hold ledge to stall out the Holy Water, the F Smash can be angled downwards to hit their ledge hang with the tipper. If the Belmont succeeds with the ledge trap, you'll be sent back off stage where he can repeat the process again and again and again until you come back to the ledge. Looking at all of these situations, the Belmonts can really make you feel like you can't play the game in neutral or their advantage state. Eventually, you'll probably land a hit though, and the Belmonts are known for having a pretty poor disadvantage state. So this should be the fun part, right? Well, not necessarily. The Belmonts' disadvantage state is bad because they don't have fast combo breakers. They have poor airspeed to drift away in the air, and their recovery is very gimpable. All that being said, there are actually a few specific options that you need to look out for when you find your way in. The first is down air. Simon and Richter have what's known as a stall and fall aerial, wherein they use a downward hitting move that propels them down as well. Although it's very punishable to land with, down air forces you to guess between hitting him in the air or waiting for his attack, as the down air ensures him a quick ticket to the ground. If you guess wrong and attempt to hit the Belmont in the air, down air will bounce off of you and can combo into a forward air or an up B if you don't DI properly. Unlike most stall and fall aerials, this down air can also bounce off of shields, so simply staying on the ground and shielding isn't enough to get a free punish on this move. Another common landing option for the Belmonts is Fast Fall Neutral Air. This multi-hit aerial creates another guessing game like does Down Air, and if you get caught by a Fast Fall Nair, it can combo into an up B. We already mentioned that careless close range pressure against the Belmont may get you hit by his up B, but that isn't his only close quarters get off me option. Down tilt is an interesting two part move that first slides along the ground like jokers and then lets the player opt to dive forward. The dive is great for escaping close quarters interactions. Yeah, the Belmonts don't seem to like those. And the player can decide against going for the dive if the opponent retreated and anticipates it. Now I'm sure many of you are watching this and thinking, but Simon and Richter aren't even that good. And you're right, their poor recovery, limited disadvantage state and slow mobility leaves the Belmonts at mid or even sometimes low tier, but that actually makes losing to them feel even worse. Like many characters in Ultimate, they aren't very capable against skilled players who know the matchup well, but not knowing the matchup will make them seem like top tiers. And when you do know the matchup, you'll know that you have to play a very slow game with little interaction until you find your way in. Either way, the Belmonts limit the activity of the opposing player, and for most players, activity equals fun, so it's only natural that this leads to a lot of rage.
What's the last character that made you LRA a start? Or are you the master of making your opponent rage? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to Pro Guides and click the bell to keep updated with future uploads.